Welcome back to DA Griffin Hobby. My name's Dave. In this video, we're gonna find out if Simple Green makes a decent paint stripper. The engine shell parts and the tender have now been in the simple green for over two days. Uh, it's longer than I intended, but I just did not have the time to get back out here last night and pull them out. So let's see what we have. Okay, well the tender shell looks great. I mean, obviously there's some surface rust and whatnot, but as far as for my first attempt at stripping the paint and then repainting it, I think this is a perfectly fine base to start with. Wow. If you look at it, you can really see the paint just bubbled up on this. I'm just scratching it off with my finger. Some of it's just wiping off easy. Some of it seems a little tougher especially this part of the boiler that was taking the longest for the paint to loosen up on the paint really loosened up inside first but if the whole thing looks as good as it does right here that's gonna be just a great piece to repaint i do see some rust here so i might need to do a little bit of light sanding but we'll scrape this up and see what it looks like all right yeah, all this paint seems pretty loose. Should come off easy. I would say I used three quarters of the gallon of Simple Green uh, to make sure that everything was covered. Where although uh, it really didn't cover the very bottom of this, it was upside down, so it really didn't get that. But I'm okay with that. I can always sit it back in there for a little bit. But so I used three quarters of the gallon maybe. And that would be about, I don't know, $7 worth of simple green. So not cheap, but not crazy expensive either. I'll put uh, a top on this container uh, or put this in another container and try to use this again, because I'm sure it's still semi-decent. I mean, I wouldn't use it to clean the kitchen floor or anything, but it's not trash yet. I have two brushes. This is a stripping brush and this is a wire brush. I'm just gonna go for the stripping brush first, see how it does. Sort of doing the job. Metal brush working a lot better. Now, why did I use simple green and not something stronger or whatnot? I, personally, I don't wanna be using things like brake fluid and harsh chemicals and whatnot. I, I, I have to deal with enough of that as it is. So I want what I use to be at least not too harmful to, to me as I use it. I don't need it to be perfect either. I just need it to be a semi-decent surface to work with. And I could always kind of overdo it and sit here and progressively use finer and finer sandpaper until the thing's, you know, perfectly smooth, but that really wasn't the point of this exercise. The point of this exercise was I had this shell sitting around 
had a wind up uh, mechanism in it and I wanted to do a custom paint and I figured this was probably an easy and inexpensive way to start. I'm just going to sit that back in there for now. Well, this is in pretty decent shape. I don't know that I'll get it any better by trying to rebend anything, so maybe I'll just leave it as is. The paint seemed to be a lot tougher to break through on the front piece here. This one also has some rust on it, and it's also a little deformed. But I'll see if I can kind of straighten that out. Okay, well, that cleaned up. I'm happy about that. This is definitely, I'm making a mess here. I'm getting little bits of paint everywhere. A problem with this piece is that the tabs had broken off on this side. So I'll have to figure out how I'm going to resecure that. So I'd like to say that the simple green was my idea. It was not. Uh, I was uh, just kind of surfing through YouTube. Uh, some of the other train channels, Warren Music had done a, a video and had something to do with stripping paint off with Simple Green. So I, I, I took his example and I figured I'd give it a shot. And I'm happy I did. I, I'm content with this. So this, this makes a bit of a mess. So uh, I wouldn't do this on your kitchen table. So this spot here and there and along the bottom here inside. Th that was the spot that was sticking out of the simple green. I, I don't know why I didn't just put a little more in there, but I didn't. But like I said, I really don't need this to be super clean either. The main part of the shell is actually in pretty good shape. So this isn't a bad result for just sitting in simple green for two days. It'd be nice if the whole thing was as smooth as it is on the inside. For just sitting it in simple green for a couple days, I'd say that's a fantastic result. The shell has been stripped for the most part. It's got some imperfections, some chips still on here. Uh, I figure I'll, I'll sand the whole thing down and see how clean I can get it. I don't know if soaking it would do more to get this stuff off, um, but I'm ready to move on to the next step. First, this is a shell from a clockwork engine and I want to repaint it and use it for uh, an electric motor. So this hole doesn't need to be here and that slot doesn't need to be there. So how do I fill them in? I know there's plenty of ways. If I was any good at welding, I would just, I guess, weld it and grind it down. But I'm wondering if there's an easier solder related fix. I have no idea if this is going to work, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to try it. I'm going to see if I can just solder up the hole. I would assume it won't work, but like I said, I'm going to try it anyway. Now, I'm assuming it's going to take a while to heat up the shell. So I'm just going to, I'm going to burn it a little first. A little flame in there. I probably shouldn't be playing with flame so much. I'm going to blow something up. I know you can't just, you know, solder or weld in thin air. So I got some foil here. Hold it in place drop a bunch of solder there and see what happens. Partially out of curiosity, but if it worked, that would just be really cool. Okay, I'm gonna say this isn't working, but I have another idea. I guess it would make sense if I had something to try to attach here instead of just trying to fill it. I'm at the point in this project where I just feel like trying things and seeing what happens. None of it needs to work fine with me. The fun thing about something like this is that the chances of me hurting myself are pretty good. I should probably stop playing with fire. Yeah, I didn't really think this would work, but then again, you just never know.
I think the main problem with this idea is that the engine shell is not going to get hot enough for the solder to actually stick to it. It's just going to keep pooling up on the surface. So as soon as the solder hits the metal of the shell, it just solidifies. So even if I get it to sit here and fill the hole, it's not going to stick. Just for the heck of it, since I'm messing around anyway, hit it with a bunch of solder from the back. Why? I don't know. It'd be, a, it'd be really funny to me if this actually worked. But I mean, sticking is one thing. Being able to sand it down and have it look decent from the outside is quite another. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Probably going to end up warping the shell or something. Well, that, you can barely tell I did anything there. <laughs> I guess the next issue is, can I find something to sand that down that it won't look totally obvious? Well, that's not working great, but then again, my compressor is at a really low pressure right now. So maybe I should uh, pressure that up and try it again. Okay, compressor's all pressurized. Let's try this again. Doing a decent job, but I don't want to keep sanding on it with that. So I'm going to grab some wood and some sandpaper. So I don't want to do more than take down the high spot. Then this sandpaper might not be rough enough to do that. Maybe it is. If this works, I will be totally shocked. There's definitely still a pretty significant high spot there. As it's getting sanded down, you can see there's some spots where there wasn't enough solder. So then my question becomes, do I try to fix that now? I think I do. Is it the right choice? Who knows? Am I doing this the right way? Not really. Do I care? Not at all. This is the nice thing about working on something when you're really not invested in the outcome. Just kind of do it, try it, see what happens. Hopefully you don't hurt yourself or set anything on fire. I really can't tell if this is doing anything. <laughs> I'm going to keep sanding this and see if I can smooth it down a little bit. I've been sanding this down for a bit now, and it is working. You know, it's cleaning up the side of the engine, smoothing out the solder. What I'm wondering is, as this gets closer and closer to the surface, is it eventually just going to fall out the other side? Because it's the solder on both sides that's holding it. I don't know. That'll be uh, really unfortunate <laughs> if I get it to where I want it and then it falls out. But that's, you know, what happens when you just try to make stuff up as you go. So this is pretty smooth. Not perfect, but then again, look at the engine that I'm working on. I, I'm pretty happy with the results so far. Do a little more sanding on it, and then maybe I'll do a primer coat and see what it looks like. But this actually so far worked 
a whole lot better than I thought it would. And as I was sanding it, I started thinking about paint schemes. And this thing is just like begging for a two-tone. And I don't know if that means black up here and a color here or vice versa. This is black and this was like a blue or something. I don't know. This really feels very smooth. Other than a little bit of irregularity here. So with a decent primer and some good paint on this, it might look pretty good. The next challenge, of course, will be to close up this here. I don't know. I could try JB Weld. I could try the putty. We will see. Still can't believe this is working. This is why you got to try stuff. You never know what's actually going to work out for you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time on DA Griffin Hobby.